Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel and today I'm bringing you a short video on how I unravel a double-stranded sock blank. Um, this video is inspired by Rebecca over the Chemnitz Tutorials channel, so if you've never checked her out, you definitely should. I will put a link in the iCard above. So as you can see, I found the end of my sock blank that unravels. These are my speckled gradient blanks that I put in my Etsy shop. And here I'm showing you on a nitty naughty how you at home could unravel a double-stranded sock blank on your own. So as you can see here, there are two strands that have been knit together that form the sock blank. I'm making sure that the ends of my Nitty Naughty are facing the same direction and I'm going to separate these strands and tie them one on one side and one on the other side so that I can easily separate them and flip my Nitty Naughty over and over again to unravel. If you're going to do this on your own at home, you can use a homemade Nitty Naughty. If you wanted to, you can also purchase Nitty Naughty like this on a website called The Willery or another similar website. This is just an Ashford wooden knitty knotty and has served me very well over the last couple of years. So as you can see here I'm just tying off my strands and then I'm going to start unraveling. If you're doing this yourself I definitely recommend setting aside a good chunk of time so that in case you have any twisting or issues with your sock blank that you can resolve them all in one go. This is a commercially knit blank so I know I'm not going to have any issues with twisting but if you are making your own homemade blanks or have purchased a homemade blank from someone else then you may have issues. So here you can see I'm using my left hand to separate the strands and my right hand to flip the nitty knotty over and over again. This allows me to unwind two skeins simultaneously. Uh, so at the end I will wind up with two 50 gram skeins of yarn. That will be perfect for winding off for socks or anything else that I choose to make. These will be headed into the shop soon, so you'll probably see more and more of these speckled gradient pairs going in. So there's the unwinding process. So for me, I do it on my skein winder, so you can see me here on my skein winder. Even if you're using a Nitty Naughty, I recommend this technique as well to secure your yarn using a figure eight tie. I like to put both ends of my yarn together with my figure eight tie and then tie them all in one knot so that I know exactly where all my ends are and I'm not worried when I am reskeining, I mean, <laughs> putting my yarn into a ball later on. So here is the knot. I'm going to snip it and then I'm going to show you here I do tie my yarn off in several places so I do a few figure eight ties one on the bottom one on the top and one on the side and then I take a neutral piece of yarn like this this is just a piece of acrylic yarn and I tie it off to keep the pair together for me since I run a business I like to keep my pairs together so I'm not uh, mixing them up with other pairs of the same color right but you don't have to do this that step and then I remove it from my skein winder or my nitty naughty to release the pressure from the yarn. So as you can see here, I have a nice tasty meal. It's called yarn ramen. And for me, this is not very pleasant to stitch with, which is why I don't like knitting or crocheting directly from a sock blank. So what I do is I soak the yarn and this helps to relax the fiber. This is a technique that you use when you're spinning and you're setting the twist of your yarn. This is very helpful to kind of unblock the twist that has been made in your yarn from knitting it into a blank. So I'm just squeezing the excess water out. I usually wait 10 or 15 minutes for soaking superwash yarn. For non-superwash, I give it a little extra time, but you can see here that the yarn is nice and relaxed. And here it is all dried. So I just hang it on my drying rack. When it's finished, I make two little 50 gram hanks from it, take a pretty picture, and put it in my Etsy shop. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. I hope you found it informative. If you did and you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that little notification bell so you can be reminded anytime that I'm uploading a new video. I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you in my next video. Bye!